Hi, welcome to the part 6 of this tutorial about tips to make a floor plan. In this tutorial I will teach you how to insert text in AutoCAD in several ways and then how we can plot a project. With setting up a scale to print and choose the paper size that we require. Ok, on the first section of this video we will learn to insert text in AutoCAD. And what we have to do is to insert these room labels on the floor plan. Ok, the first thing I recommend is to create a new layer to place all the text objects. And in my case I've chosen a light grey colour. Ok, to insert text in AutoCAD there are two options. If I go here to the annotation panel and click in this arrow, there is single line and multi line text. As in this case, the labels only have one line, the option single line text suits fine for me. Now, one thing the keyboard shortcut of the command single text is TE, and is the first option that appears here. I tell you this because if you would type only T, the option that would come is the multi-line text instead. I activate the command and the first thing is to click for the start point. Then I specify a vertical line where its length will be the height of the text. In this case I want it as 0.4 meters. Then this dashed line indicates the rotation or direction of the text. If I click here, the text would appear like this. But as I want it horizontal, I can click when says polar. I click to start typing the text. When I finish, I click in another place and press escape. Back in the floor plan, now I am able to insert all these single text objects. I can do the same for all the others, or to be faster, what I'm going to do is to copy this text to all the rooms here. Only after I change the name of one by one individually. So I can use the command copy. I select the text, press enter, specify the base point, for example more or less here, and then I'm going to copy it to each room. As this doesn't have to be with precision, I can just place it roughly in the middle. When I finish, I can press escape. After this, I just have to click in each label to rename it. For example, I go to the dining area, I click in this text and change the name to dining area. This one is the kitchen. Click again and type kitchen. So I keep doing this until I change all the names. Also, I can click in the base points to change to a better position the labels. Ok, after having all the text, we can edit all together if we desire. If I go to the tab Annotate in the ribbon, I click on it, I can see the text panel. Here, we can click in this little arrow located there and the window with the textile options appears. Here I can change the font name and I want to set it up as Candera. On the right there is the font style. I can change it to bold, italic or regular. I can click in apply and close. As you see, the text to the text font apply to all the objects. But 
there are still more properties that I can change, but this time I have to select objects. Let's go back to the Home tab, and if I want to select all the objects of a specific layer, on the Layers panel I can click in this icon that's called Isolate. Then, if I select an object, and I want one of the texts, when I press Enter, Isolate the layer text labels and all the other layers are locked. This means that if I select everything and I press delete, for example, it only works for the isolated layer. Ok, obviously I didn't want to delete the text, I press Ctrl Z to undo the action. Ok, let's select everything again. Click with the right button, go to the Quick Properties, then I click in this tab that says All, and I can select the kind of objects that I want. I'm going to click in the Text Objects. And here you can see the most used properties for texts. I can change, for example, the height, clicking there, if I type 0.8, and press enter, you can see the text size changed to a bigger one. In Justify, I can change the position of the text. I can place it center, right, left, there are several options. For me, I prefer to have it center, but it's as you wish. Finally, if I don't want this layer isolated anymore, click in the icon and isolate right below. Ok, before going ahead in this tutorial, I want to mention this label which has two lines. We are going to make this with the multi-line text. As you remember, I can go to the arrow below text and there is the option multi-line text. To activate this command using the keyboard, simply type T. Now, this works a bit different than the single line text as I have to open an area where the text will fit. In this box, it, it's only important the horizontal length, because, for example, if I choose this area, I click for the second point, the text that I type fits until the end of the rule, and I can insert any lines that I want. Back to our case, I create this box as I want to fit the text on this room. To go to the next line, I press Enter. To finish, just click in another place, like the single text. Ok, unlike the single text, if I double click in this label, I can see the text editor tab appearing in the ribbon. There is style, formatting, paragraph and another things. For now, I just want to change the text height to a bit smaller to fit there. For that, I have to select the text, go to the size, which is this tab, and type 0.3, I think it's fine. As you see, it fits better there. Ok, our floor plan is almost finished, I just don't have the dimension lines there. But first, I want to teach you how to plot a drawing. The example here is going to be this floor plan in an A4 paper with the scale 1 per 200 and also with this legend included there. Ok, first of all, let's introduce you these tabs located on the bottom at the left. The current one is the model and it's where we can make all our drawings. The other tabs are specific for printing. For example, here we are in the layout one. This has a specific paper size that I can modify in the page setup manager. Currently, this is an A4 paper. So if I have a printer that prints in A4, the result will be exactly like this, included this rectangle. But what is that? It's a viewport. A viewport is like a portal that displays a specific part from the workspace. 
For example, here I'm going to double click inside this viewport and I see that I switch it to the mode of space, as it says here. I can zoom in or make any change to the drawing, but be aware that any modification here will affect also the proper drawing. Ok, now let's see how to set up the paper size and choose a specific scale, for example 1 per 200. I go to the Layout 1 tab, click with the right button and then choose Page Setup Manager. Here I select Layout 1, click in Modify and in the window that opens I can choose the printer, the paper size along with more options. In the Printer tab I can select my printer or if I want to convert to PDF there are several ways, but I prefer to use this one, DWG to PDF. The paper size, I can keep this one, ISO A4. But look at this, this is an important thing, the sizes there are in millimeters, and in my drawing I set up the unit as a meter. So I have to go to the plot scale, and here where it says 1 mm equals to 1 unit, I'm going to change it to 1000, as 1000 mm is 1 meter. I click on OK, close, and the viewport disappeared, apparently of course, because what happened is that the paper was resized, but not the viewport. And if I zoom out a lot, I can see it very big outside. Don't worry, the first thing is to click there and delete it. In fact, I could do it before resizing the paper. I press delete, I zoom in again, and now let's create a new viewport. To create a new viewport, go to this layout tab that appeared on the ribbon, it's only here when I'm in the layout mode, I click there, and if I click in this icon that says rectangular, on the layout viewports panel, I can insert a new viewport, but before, let's create a special layer for it. Name it viewport, the new layer, and choose this white color here, which is number 7, click OK, and you realize in the layout it changes automatically to black. Then I'm going to click in rectangular viewport, if I click in the arrow I can see more options, but I just want the first one, for now. Then I draw a rectangle inside the dash lines, to be sure everything fits in the paper. After I double click on it to go to the mode of space, and now I need to set up the scale for the viewport. It's this icon on the status bar. I click on it, I search for the scale of 1 per 200, but I cannot find it. No problem, I can click in custom, then in add to add a new scale. And in this window, first I have to type the name of the scale, it can be 1 per 200, and after I have to fill this, 1 paper unit equals 200 drawing units. Click in OK, the same here, go again to scale and choose 1 per 200, which is up here. Oh, the scale was very approximate. Now I'm sure this is 1 per 200. Then the legend, I will start drawing its boundary with the command rectangle. Be sure I draw it in the paper and not inside the viewport, so this label paper has to be displayed. If you are in modal space, double click to switch to paper. Ok, let's click here for the first corner and the second one in the opposite side, there. 
but I recommend to draw inside of the dashed area to be sure everything will be printed in the paper. Now, to draw the proper legend, I'm going to use the command line and draw a border of 6 per 12 centimeters. But as I only have two decimals here, I cannot see the centimeters. Though, I'm going to type units and in the precision, I change to three decimals. I click in OK and now I can draw easily the box. Here you can see the dimensions to help you drawing it. To insert text, we are going to do different this time, as I want it to be a notative. Click in the arrow to open the text style. And this time we are going to create two new styles. I click in new and for the first style I name it legend big. Click in OK. Tick the box that says annotative and by doing this I specify here the real text height. It's what appears in the paper. As I want it to be 4 cm, I put here 0.004. The font, I change it to Arial. Click in Apply. Then add another style for the small text. For example, the name can be Legend Small. Click in OK. And this time I want it a bit smaller with 2 cm. Finally, I, I can apply the changes and close the window. OK, now it's simple. I go to this tab and select Legend Big. I go to the first line of the box, activate the single line text. Then I go to this blank, click for the first point, And this time I don't need to specify the height, just click for specify the direction. I'm going to type project. Then I do the same for the location and drawing name. After the small text, I can use multi-line text. First, let's change the style to legend small. Type T for multi-line text. Specify this drawing area. You can draw the following labels and then if you select all, there is an option to change the line spacement. I click in 1.5. So, now that my paper layout is finished, I can print the drawing. Click with the right button in layout tab, go to plot, here click in continue to plot a single sheet, and in the printer here, I want to convert DWG to PDF, this option. Click in OK to save the file where I want. This is my result. However, you can see there the layout border appearing. If you don't like it, you can easily hide it. Going back to the paper space, I can click in the viewport but it wasn't in the correct layer. I click in this tab in the layer panel to change it to viewport, but you need to freeze it, clicking in this icon. Here it says one object moved to a frozen layer, ok, no problem. And go again to layout and do the same process. Plot it, choose again the printer and click in ok. Finally, the file appeared without a viewport, like this. So, it's all in the part 6 of this tutorial about the floor plan. Thank you very much for watching and see you on the next part.